money back. That made no sense. <sighs> oh my god. I'm like pissing myself off because I'm just like failing at talking right now. everyone it's your girl Jay and today I'm here with my July wrap-up for 2020 I read a total of seven books this month so without further ado let us get started so the first book that I read this month is called A Wicked Magic and it is by Sasha Lawrence I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars it follows Dan and Liz who discover this little black book that makes them into naive witches and they decide that they are going to to perform a spell that is going to change their life forever but something goes wrong which causes Johnny Liss's boyfriend to go missing. Their friendship ends up falling apart and they quickly realize that the only way to get Johnny back is to work together and they also need some help from Alexa who is Dan's new friend. I was initially drawn to this book because I think the cover is so pretty and I also was super excited for The Promise of Witches but ultimately I was very disappointed with this book. It was was not what I wanted it to be. I think that this book needs a lot of trigger warnings that weren't given for like cutting, suicide idealization, um, parental neglect, physical and mental abuse, a relationship between multiple younger girls and an older male. Just like a lot of stuff was going down in that book that I was not expecting and I was just like okay this is darker than I thought. I enjoyed the story at the beginning of the book. I was liking where it was going but then it got to the point where it was very repetitive and it just felt like it was going around in circles without actually moving the plot forward in any way. I also think that the ending was very anticlimactic for the amount of build-up that they were providing to the reader. It just seemed that the characters kind of stumbled upon the solution to their problems and how to like defeat the bad guy rather than actually having a definitive plan going into their situation. I also hated the friendship between Dan and Liz. It was just so extremely toxic. I just wanted to keep them apart from each other at all times. The only character I somewhat liked was Alexa but her part in the story was so little that I wish that it was like just a story about Alexa to be honest and her story plot line. Overall it was alright but it wasn't anything overly special or memorable in my opinion so yeah 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was The Rosie Project by Graeme Simmons and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Don Tillman who is a geneticist. He is on the lookout for his perfect woman so he decides to start a project called The wife project in order to find her. Things aren't exactly going to plan for Dawn and that's when he meets a barmaid named Rosie who is looking for her biological father. She ends up asking Dawn for his help and thus begins the father project. Rosie is everything that Dawn is not looking for in a wife but as they spend more time together his outlook on life begins to change and it's like the story of that. I have very mixed feelings about this book because on one hand like I enjoyed my time reading it but on the other hand some of the things that Dawn does is very uncomfortable and I believe that he is meant to be autistic but it was never explicitly said that he was and it just really bothered me that Dawn's friends just kind of like laughed at him when he did something that wasn't necessarily socially acceptable rather than telling him like hey maybe we should do this x y and z because this x y and z is not appropriate in this situation but no they just laughed at him and it just really bothered me and I don't know if that's because I've worked with kids and adults who are on the spectrum and like just the thought of sitting there and laughing at them just makes me really angry or if I'm just overreacting I don't know I just did not like that part of the book at all. I liked Rosie for the most part when I was reading the book but her constant mention about how fucked up she is and how she has these huge daddy issues just got on my nerves after a while. I also think that the ending was a little bit anticlimactic for my liking so like overall it was a fun read while it lasted but again nothing super memorable so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I have was definitely my favorite of the month. It is Goddess in the Machine by Lori Beth Johnson. I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows Andromeda who was put into a psychogenetic stasis years ago in the hopes of being woken up a hundred years in the future in order to help colonize a new planet. So when she ends up waking up a thousand years into the future instead things 
about her life are drastically changed, not to mention everybody is calling her goddess. So Andra seeks the help of a bastard prince named Zaid in order to get her out of this mess and it's like the story of that. I actually really liked this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I was so invested in this plot and the story and the world that they were living in. I found the nanotech that they used to be so interesting and I just wanted to know more about it. I honestly love Zaid so much. He was just so charming and sarcastic and like moody all wrapped into one. I just loved him so much and I loved the banter between Zaid and Andra. I wanted them to fall in love so desperately. Like I was rooting for them so hardcore throughout the entire book. There were so many twists and turns in this book that there was never really a dull moment. The only complaint that I do have for this book is the dialogue that the civilization that Andra woke up in. It was made up so it was a little bit jarring when I was first trying to figure out what all the words meant but once I got the hang of it it wasn't really as bad as at the beginning of the book when I was trying to figure everything out. But yeah, overall, like a really great sci-fi book. I definitely recommend it if you guys are into sci-fi. It was a lot of fun. The next book I have is called Come Again by Robert Webb. I gave this a three out of five stars. This book follows Kate who fell in love with her husband Luke 28 years ago on first sight. So when he passes away, she is devastated. So Kate is obviously grieving from her loss and that's when she wakes up in her old body 28 years ago the night she met Luke. And she decides that she is going to kind of guide him in his life choices in order to prevent his early death and it's like the story of that. This was extremely average for me. I did not give a shit about Kate. I didn't give a shit about Luke. I didn't give a shit about any of the characters. I did not feel a connection between Kate and Luke at all. It honestly just kind of felt like they hated each other and it wasn't like a cute enemies to lovers kind of situation. It was more of a like I despise your existence and I don't want you to be alive even though I came back to the past in order to prevent your death but I fucking hate you. And it just didn't make sense to me. I did like the idea of the time traveling but then part three came around and it didn't make any sense to the story whatsoever. It was like a very easy read. It flew by very quickly but like I said, it was just very, very average in my opinion. So three out of five. The next book I read was Cruel Crown by Victoria Aveyard. I gave this a three out of five stars. These are the two novellas in the Red Queen series. I read the Red Queen last month. I believe I gave it a four out of five stars, but this one I did not enjoy that much. This includes Queen Song, which is Corianne's background story, and Steel Scars, which follows Farley. For the time I was reading it, I enjoyed it, but I don't think that either of the stories were memorable at all. I did enjoy the Queen song more because I just felt like learning about Cal's mother was very interesting because we didn't get a lot of information about her in The Red Queen. As for Steel Scars, I was initially intrigued because while I was reading Red Queen, I think that Captain Farley was one of the most intriguing characters to me. But as I was reading Steel Scars, like, I honestly didn't really care that much about her story, which was a little bit disappointing. But I did really like learning more about Shade in Steel Scars because I just loved his character in the first book, so I liked seeing him again. But yeah, like I said, I liked the stories as I read them, but I don't think either of them were necessary for the series. I think it was kind of more of a little cash grab kind of situation going on but it was fun while it lasted so three out of five the next book i read was extras this is by scott westerfeld this is the fourth and final book in the ugly series i gave this a three out of five stars i was a little bit disappointed in this one it was kind of strange because it followed completely different characters from the first three books but then brought tally back in the last act of the book which just seemed strange to me I did like Aya as a main character, she was interesting enough, but I didn't care that much about her story and her journey and how she got to where she was getting. I was really interested in the Sly Girls, but then they ended up being such a small part of the story, which was really disappointing in my opinion. I also think that the concept of radical honesty was really interesting, but again, it wasn't really explored that much, which again, was disappointing to me. My favorite character was Mogul, who is the little spy camera, and I mean, I feel like that kind of tells you what I thought about this series, the fact that a little spy camera is my favorite character out of everybody in the book. Overall, like, 
it was okay. I definitely preferred the original trilogy more. This and then the final book that I read was The Damned by Renee Adier. This is the second book in the beautiful series. I believe there's going to be four books. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked how this story was more of a focus on Bastion. I do really like Celine as a main character, but learning more about his backstory was definitely needed for the storyline. I also really liked that we got points of views from characters other than Bastion and Celine. I think that it definitely was a great addition to the story. The biggest complaint I have for this book is the love triangle between Bastion, Celine, and Michael. It didn't make any sense why it was included because like everybody knows that Celine is going to pick Bastion in the end. Like Michael doesn't have any chance whatsoever so it was kind of stupid. Like I, I get why it's included for the feud between Bastion and Michael, but like, it just bothered me because everybody knows he does not stand a chance and it's just kind of stupid and pointless in my opinion, but whatever. I am intrigued to see where the story goes just because I know that there's two more books and we were left on a cliffhanger, but I'm not gonna go like out of my way to go pick up the book as soon as it's released, but if it so happens to fall into my hands, I'll read it. Alright everybody, so that was my July wrap-up for 2020. It's kind of weird because I can't say that there's going to be a part two because I only read seven books this month, which is so weird for me. I usually read like 20 and have to do three-part wrap-ups, but let's blame William for that. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!